Hi everyone, welcome to DIY Ideas. Today I'm showing you how you can make this lovely tote bag. So this is a gift in my case, but you can of course make it for yourself too. So I took a fabric marker and I colored these myself, which makes this great and highly customizable in case you're looking for a project like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So for today you'll need some fabric. I recommend cotton or something that's just a bit sturdier. So this is also great for project leftovers, the leftover fabric from other projects. I chose a lighter color this time because I'll decorate it in the end. So you'll see how that looks. Um, then fabric scissors as always, something to measure with, safety pin and some regular pins of course. And as I said, I want to decorate it in the end, so I have here some textile or fabric markers and some paint. So either way, whatever you can find for coloring your fabric will work just fine. So this is all you're going to need. Let's get started. So the bag itself will be super simple. So this is 1 time 90 times 40 centimeters or in inches 35 times 15. I'm making it out of one piece in order to keep it simple. So in my case, the 40 centimeters is the width and the 90 is the height. Since I'll fold it in the end, it'll actually be a bag size 45 times 40 centimeters approximately. Make sure you calculate a little bit of room for your stitches as well. So it might seem huge when you cut it out at first and don't worry, when you finish you'll have enough room for notebooks, books and similar stuff, but it'll definitely be a bit smaller than what it looks like when we get started. So if you don't have such a big piece of fabric, you can of course do two pieces that are half as long but equally wide and you can just stitch them up to get one bigger piece. Also, you're gonna need two handles, so either you do two times 80 centimeters of rope or anything else of that kind. So this is the length that I chose two times or just do it out of the fabric. So I took eight centimeters of width here since we fold it in half and stitch it up, it'll end up smaller. So if you're doing inches, this is 30 times three inches. You need two pieces, so this is if you want to wear it over your shoulder, but feel free to alter the size. So let's start with the handles. That way they are ready for the main part. So take one piece first. So as you can see, my fabric frays quite a bit. You may notice that, but anyway, let's fold this pretty side on pretty side this way. So when I say this way, I mean not like this. So I want it folded on the smaller side, so to speak. In my case, the two sides are identical, but if you have fabric that has an obvious front and back, then you want the front side um, inside when you fold it in half. So you want the front side basically folding on top of its half. Then you stitch it up to get a little tunnel shape. So this is super easy. You just begin on one end and you just do a straight stitch all the way till you get to the other. So you can pin it of course if you need to, but this is one of the simplest sewing steps that we have in this and many other projects. So this should be fairly easy to do. Also make sure you secure the endings of course and leave the little sides open. So I took a safety pin and I went through just the one open end here and then you can just go inside and push it through to turn this inside out. It's a lot easier with the safety pin than without and just take your time so that you don't rip anything. Mm -hmm. 
Now you take a look that the stitch is really on the edge. So you want this aligned so that you get a really neat result in the end and so that it looks its best, of course. So optionally, what you can do is another stitch on the outside. So just by the edge, really. So here, in order to keep it neat and a little bit flatter, and then you can just go back on the other side to make it nice and symmetrical. Now you should have both handles done. So this is the effect that we get with the two extra stitches on both sides. And I think it looks really nice for now. So they're going to stay nice this way when we do the whole bag too. Also, optionally, you can iron over these if you'd like and then just put them to the side. Now we're going to do the main section. So here is my huge piece. So the pretty side is facing my desk. This one here. Now we can fold the longer side in half. This section is already closed up this way, so we don't have to stitch that at all. Now, one half of the pretty side is facing you and the other half of it is facing the desk or your surface. So now we can do the outside stitch. Then we can turn and do the same on the inside. So this is called a French stitch and I'll explain it and show it in a moment. This way you don't need an inside piece and you can still have stitches that are nice and don't fray. So now that we have the stitches on both sides, we are pretty much done with the first part of stitching. So this is the first half of it. Now we can turn this inside out, of course. So this should be your bag from the outside and this from the inside. So just turn it so that you have your stitching on the inside. Now you should have your sides looking like this and we have the stitching here. Um, if you take a look, so it should be on the inside now. And now you need to align the stitching, so just like with the handles. So we're doing the same as with them. So what we're going to do is just take our sewing machine again and stitch over this little edge section or right next to it. Also, this time you do want to have about one to one and a half centimeters of distance, so a quarter inch. So that way you can hide the stitch inside and you don't get um, anything weird going on. So that's basically the French stitch I was talking about. So nothing sticks out that way. In my case, I shortened this a bit to make sure it's going to stay on the inside. But we're basically making a little pocket. Um, and this pocket is going to hide the stitching and prevent fraying completely. We are going to do the same on the other side, of course. So just align everything, check if it looks good. And then you can stitch this along the edge all the way to the bottom. Here is what we have. So you have a regular stitch here, but you can see that the ends are not fraying anymore because we hit that inside of the stitch. So this is why I said it looks like a little pocket or a little section. So if you have thinner fabric, you actually can tell where the stitching is but it's still completely inside and safe. So now we can turn this thing inside out. So this was the inside actually. And on the outside, you won't see anything but a super clean, super neat stitch. So this way, nothing frays. It's really stable in here. The stitch is super safe and it holds a shape as well. So this is of course really great um, if you have a little bit sturdier fabric, those usually fray a lot more easily than the stretchy ones. So we do want to have a bag that keeps its shape, so that's why I recommend such fabric. 
Here are some of the threads that are sticking out, but these we can just pull out or cut off. So now we're done and you can make this top section a little bit nicer. So for that, we'll just do a regular seam to make it not fray anymore. So for that, I'm just gonna um, fold this two times inwards. I'm using the stitches to orient and then I'm just folding it once and then twice and what I'm gonna do is pin these to keep it in place and then just stitch over it to keep it that way. Just make sure you do it doubled, that way you secure everything and it looks really neat from the inside and the outside as well. If you're a beginner, you can do the first fold first and then when you're done with that, do the second fold one more time. Or, of course, you can do this directly as one step, so the first one directly folded over the second one. So I ironed over it before I stitched and this is why it looks so neat and the stitch itself is also really straight this way, really neat so there's no mistakes that can happen this way. And this is pretty much it, so you see what it looks like, now we just need our handles. Let's fetch one really quick. So you can decide on your own where you want to position these, so this is completely up to you. You can make them super wide, a little bit less wide, really narrow, so that's completely up to you. So this is what we're going to do next. In order to keep it neat, I'm going to fold it in half and I'm also making sure that everything is nice and straight, nicely aligned, of course. Um, and then I'm just going to find the middle this way. So by folding it in half, it's a lot easier to make it symmetrical on both sides. So this way you also don't actually have to measure anything. You can just pick whichever position you would like to have and just pin to mark it. So you see how I marked this and the effect that we actually get is the equal distance from both ends, so super symmetrical. Now we can just take one of the handles and align with our marking pin. So you can of course make this from the outside and just fold upwards, that way you have an effect from the outside so the way it looks you can actually see it but hide the frame of course. So that's one way to do it. Or you can do it from the inside and that way you can kind of hide that so that the handle actually gets out of the back or it looks that way. Before you choose either method, make sure that you just take a little end of it and fold it inwards like this. So this is going to prevent fraying and it's going to keep it all nice and neat. So that's definitely something that you want to do. And either way, I think I'm going to do it from the inside. Just stitch it up here with a regular straight stitch. Or as I said, you can do it on the outside. In that case, you do want to take a look where your stitch, your existing stitch is and just align it. Or you can even um, do it a bit longer and then have the optical effect or the visual effect like it. So just make it longer and then stitch. Either way, I find it super neat when you align your stitches. So my handles are done and you can see here how I secured them. So by doing a little square here that you can see as my base on the inside, that way you see it actually on the outside as well or um, vice versa, it doesn't matter. So by doing the square, I'm actually securing the entire section that's going to hold all the weight. So that's a really cool thing to do, the little square. And then of course, I did the little cross inside to just make sure it really stays there. So this is what we have for now and the bag is pretty much done. And if you have prettier fabric, of course, you can already give this away to someone if this was a gift. 
or you can of course additionally decorate this any way you like and make it super custom made all for you or your friends and family. So here is what I have. I'm going to use these markers simply because they're a lot easier to work with. I think anything you can find that actually has um, fabric or textile on it is safe for using. So just make sure that you remember that you wash it in this case at 40 degrees Celsius, so not at a super high temperature. And yeah, um, read the instructions if there are any, that's always a smart idea and draw whatever you want to draw. So whichever design you want, just make sure you remember that you need to wash this at maximum 40 degrees Celsius, in my case with my markers. Of course, depending on the type that you have, the instructions might be a bit different and of course the way you do it. So you can have little tubes where you actually paint the stuff like acrylic paint or something like that. So either way, if you use a marker or anything else, it should be just fine as long as it's really for fabric. Of course, if you're not really a great drawer or a great painter, you can just, um, like I am going to do, take something from the internet and print it out on a piece of paper. And in my case, since the fabric is pretty thin, I'm going to be able to just stick it inside and see it through the fabric and that way just copy it onto my bag. So you guys, here is what I meant and what I have. So this is the design I want to do. I actually did the inside with a little surface. So you can use any cardboard or pretty much anything that's a little bit um, yeah, more stable, I guess. Um, that way it's going to stay there and you're not going to have anything slip or act in a weird way. And then you can just get to your drawing, of course. So you see here that I have just some regular clothes pins. Of course, you can do this any way you like or with anything you have at home. Just make sure your surface is really sturdy so that you can draw on here and nothing gets weird. So you guys, here is my complete tote bag now and this is what it looks like. So this is the design that I wanted. Of course, I did it here in a pretty simple manner. So it's just contouring. Um, I'm going to show you some different ones I did. So here I did a little panda. Um, I just thought it looked really cool and it also has the be happy on the bottom. So you can see that you can do pretty much anything. Here is a little bit more complicated design, but all in all, just make sure you do something you personally like. So this is a great project as a gift for someone. That way you can make it really like the person would like to have it, or you can make this for yourself and have super great tote bags for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Feel free to shoot us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay updated with our new project and you can check out our older projects as well. So thanks for watching DIY Ideas. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye!